Hello everybody, although I've actually already done a video on this before, um, I feel like I want to redo it because number one, some of the stuff that I did in the video is a little unclear. Um, number two, I'm going to go more into depth. Um, and number three, better production, video production quality. Um, I'm going to talk about the difference between a Blake stitched shoe okay, and a Goodyear welted shoe. Now I'm going to go into great detail with diagrams and or actually cut these suckers apart and uh, show you the differences, advantages, and drawbacks of each style of shoe, both Blake stitched and Goodyear welted, okay? All right, let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. Some stains there. Let's get a nice lather. Here is the finished product. I'm not a professional. How tight this is though. A pair of Allen Edmonds torn apart. That to me is a proper mirror shine. So here it goes. And here they are finished up. So what I've got here today are a pair of, uh, this would be considered an Oxford, um, an Oxford, the closed lacing system here. Wingtip, you see this swoop swoop design, right? That you know comes back. And uh, medallion on the cap toe. And you can see this beautiful woven leather design. Now I haven't touched these shoes yet, so. I might think these might be an older Meslon shoe. I just haven't seen that logo. I come across quite a few. I come across Meslon shoes very often in the thrift stores. So that tells me with the, you know, as often as I see them, I know they must sell a lot, okay? Their shoes start at, I believe, um, their website, current website, about $275, um, up to like $500. Then you get into the exotics, um, which I have, think they have some for like 700 bucks. But they've got a lot of shoes in the range of $300, give or take. Um, you know, you know, different styles and things like that. Some of them they make are Blake stitched. Some of them are Goodyear welted. I I'll come to that. And if you can see there that lining, okay, that's a little better. This is very difficult to do there. So the leather lining basically goes part way down. Then you see the insole. Can you see the insole there? Okay. And can you see, it doesn't show up tremendously well, but you see the white stitching. Do you see that? So this is Blake stitched. If you can see the stitching there on the left side of the shoe, okay, what you're actually seeing is these stitches. So the outsole is stitched basically directly to the insole and the shoe upper. Does that make sense? So you can see here, it doesn't overhang the shoe very much at all. And you can see also from a thickness standpoint, it's very slim and slender, okay? So let me show this a little better. So what you're seeing here is the Blake stitched a little diagram. Now you can see the shoe upper, uh, you can see the insole, that's the part that your foot actually touches, and then you see the leather outsole. Now what you're basically seeing is that the stitch goes straight through from the channel, okay, on the outsole, straight through to the insole, capturing the upper, and it's just all stitched in one process. Um, and basically, here's a couple of the challenges with it. First of all, as uh, I showed you earlier though, the advantage to it is that it has a more slim appearance, I guess you could say. The sole doesn't overhang the shoe as much as I showed you a second ago. Uh, it's a simpler process. It makes a more flexible sole. But here's the downside. You see there's really no padding compared to the Goodyear welted. There's a gap, there's a space, a cavity on the Goodyear welted where they have padding in. Uh, the better shoes like Allen Edmonds and a lot of the high-end shoes, they will have a cork filling in there. It doesn't always have to be cork. It can be a, you know, artificial material. So what that padding does is it creates insulation, okay? Because you will see a, a, a shoe without that insulation in there. If you live somewhere where the, uh, there's a lot of wet and then winter weather with snow, when the outsole is leather, it will soak up water and then you can feel the cold go right through into your foot, okay? Um, so the padding provides not just comfort, okay, but it also provides insulation from the cold. And what you'll see is with the Blake stitch, stitched shoes, if you're walking on rough surfaces, you know, you can feel the bumps and things up uh, uh, through the shoe more. So it's just not as rugged of a construction. Um, and also, it's my understanding is it's more difficult to resole, okay? Um, I can't tell you whether a cobbler can or can't do it, but I do know it takes a different machine than to resole the Goodyear welted, okay? One other cha uh, challenge, you see the stitch is going from the outsole through the insole, so you do have a hole there that can wick water uh, through the shoe into the shoe interior, okay? Now, let's look at Goodyear welted. So with Goodyear welted, you see in green there, I have the welt. Uh, and the welt, and, and this is the part here, part of the reason I'm doing this is I feel like I didn't explain this part very well in previous videos, okay? I have another video called Goodyear Welted Shown, the production quality is not as good, and this part's not as accurate, okay? So the welt stitch, the green, in this case, welt, is stitched 
through the leather upper. You can see here, I, I showed a lining. Of course, a Blake stitched shoe would have a lining too. I just didn't show it. The shoe upper, the shoe lining is captured. And those also, do you see that gray piece? I'll show you what that gray piece is. It's another piece of fabric. And then you can see the insole. That gray piece of fabric uh, is basically, it looks like a canvas material to me on the couple shoes I'm gonna show you is glued to the insole and it just to me i think it's just an additional piece of strength and i think it also uh, um, you know basically helps hold the insole uh it just helps capture the insole to the upper um, and to the welt so that's one stitch there and then you can see that creates a void and that void is filled it can be filled with different materials but traditionally cork and I'm going to show you how the cork compresses and where there is more body weight, it will compress down more. So the shoes, uh, sometimes people don't believe me, but ask anybody who owns a pair of shoes with cork in them like Allen Edmonds, over time they will conform to your foot. If you go, you know, go pick up any pair of Allen Edmonds in the thrift store um, that has, you know, wear on them, you can feel the bone, uh, um, you know, indentations of the bone structure of the previous owner's foot. So that's why you don't want to, you know, uh, um, in my opinion, buy um, shoes like that that are too heavily imprinted. So the welt, then you see the outsole is stitched to the welt. So that stitch can be broken and the outsole can be removed and changed more easily. Now it does overhang more, so it's chunkier and it's also thicker, so it's not as flexible, but I prefer it because I walk outside a lot. I don't want a shoe that's slim, slender, sleek. You know, I want protection, you know, so that's my personal opinion. Um, the Blake stitch, you'll see more in the European style, slim, slender shoe, um, and the Goodyear welted goes more with the English, US, uh, more traditional British style of shoe. Okay, so what I have here is I have two pairs of shoes. I have a pair of, uh, this is a pair of Allen Edmonds Arlingtons, and here's a pair of Florsheim Imperials. Um, and by the way, don't be too upset about these pair. The Florsheim Imperials, by the way, you know, they're cracked. The leather uppers are cracked too bad to, you know, be worth anything. And the uh, um, Allen Edmonds here, it, it, this kilt is like the size of Texas. I mean, it's just, to me, it's just the ugliest, you know, thing in the world. It just, you know, I don't think I'm doing any, you know, harm by cutting them up. I got them from a thrift store. And I know other, by the way, other people like Antonio Centena recently did a shoe where he cut up a shoe. I don't want to look like a copycat, but I think this is a good way to show, um, you know, the interior structure. Uh, by the way, I've already shown this, my Goodyear Welted Shown uh, video. Um, I did that. I released that in July of 2017. So I don't want you to think I'm a complete copycat. So now, first of all, um, let me just start here with the cross section, okay? So this is a Goodyear welted shoe. I've already removed the heel, you can see. So just like in my picture, right? You can see here, this is the, this is the outsole, right? Here you can see the cork layer, right? You can also see it a little more clearly on the toe. This is, this is the opposite side. Okay, do you see the cork layer? Can you see how it is more compressed here? Because this area here would be about the area of the, um, probably the area of the ball of the foot or the big toe, probably the big toe, okay? And then this is the insole. Now here's a part that some people miss. Higher quality shoes, look at the thickness of that. This is a full leather insole, okay? It's not always gonna necessarily be leather, right? That's gonna add another layer of conforming material to your, okay, that material that conforms to your foot. Now here you can see the shoe upper and you can see the inner lining of the shoe. And there's something in here, I think this is called the toe puff. I think this is part of what keeps the, you know, the, the, the shape of the toe is what that does. But you can see these three layers come down. You see, this is the shoe upper coming down there. See, so just like I drew it, and I'm trying to keep this in focus, it does come down, okay? And then you see this white woven cloth layer there? Okay, let me show you that. I'm gonna to go to this pair, or this shoe here. You see the cork? Some of the cork, obviously, when I tore it apart, stayed on the outsole, okay? And then you can see here, I honestly don't know what this strip is, and I'm sure somebody will correct me. But you see this strip, so this strip is glued very heartily to the insole, and then it folds up. Now, you see this black line right there, okay? This is the stitch, I'm not sure if I can pull it out. This is the stitch that actually holds the welt to the upper, okay? Can you see it there? trying to pull it out and I don't know if I can it'd be great if I could do that on camera there we go it's kind of coming out I'm kind of tearing the thread apart as we do that but I think you get the idea there's more of it up here do you see the stitch right loop loop okay and there is also I really don't know what this is but there's like a metal staple there and I'm sure they're using that to probably hold the upper onto the shoe 
um, you know, before it, the welt is stitched because they have to wrap the leather upper. But can you see that? See how strong? Whoa, I think I just popped the staple. But there you can see I've kind of grabbed uh, the, the stitch, okay? And like I said, this stitch kind of goes through at an angle, like it's kind of uh, um, like looped. And this is the stitch that holds the welt on here. You can see it right here. You see this piece of string right here? Okay. This piece of string goes through to there. You see all the layers? Right? So in other words, that stitches goes through curved. I have no idea how the heck they do that. Okay. So this that I'm pulling on right now, you can see what I'm pulling on? I grabbed a loop there. That's what holds the welt to the upper, okay, and to this cloth strip here, right? And then you can see the white, okay, this is the thread that actually holds the uh, stitches the upper. I'm sorry, this is the this thread that stitches uh, the welt to the outsole. You see that there? Okay. And can you see how it's, I don't know if you can tell, but it's actually, when it's all done, it's two pieces of string looped around each other. Okay. Pretty cool. Right? So now, like I was saying, you have this void, okay, to make it level, right? They use different materials. There's cork in them. Now, this particular shoe, can you see this indent? This particular shoe had like a cardboard, a stiff cardboard shank. I'll show you a shank. Florsheim Imperials, by the way, they don't make this level of shoe anymore. But like 90s, especially the 60s, 70s, 80s, um, you know, and into the early 90s, you know, the made in USA Florsheim Imperials, um, they were a really amazing shoe, like on par with Allen Edmonds, okay, uh, a level of shoe. Now this is a long wing. See the wing tip goes all the way back. So this is a long wing blucher. This separate piece of leather, the eye stay, makes it a blucher. You can also call it a derby. But this is what's called a double oak sole. Okay, so here's one that I didn't tear apart. Uh, the heel is gone. But you see the, the thickness? Can you tell it's two layers of leather? So that's what you have here. I forgot to show you. Here is the outsole. And by the way, this sole has been replaced. I can tell this for a couple reasons. Uh, number one, the Florsheim uh, soles always say in a beautiful script this era will say uh, Florsheim, you know, on the sole in a really beautiful script. And then here's something. Oh, they also have, I think it's on the instep, um, well, you can see here, one, two, three, four, five. They call them five nail. So I don't know why, but in that area they have five nails where well, you can see where the nails were. And then obviously when they resold them, they didn't put them back on. Okay. Um, but you can see this has two layers. I, I, I think this would be called a midsole, um, you know, but uh, basically what they do is they double up and it's called the double oak sole. Okay, I don't know if they always use two layers like Alden, Allen Edmonds. I don't know if they also would use two layers or one thick piece, I don't know. But here you can very clearly see, I didn't even tear it all the way off. You see that cork material? And look at that, there is a wooden, this is a wooden shank. Okay, and it looks like it's stapled in Okay, to hold it in during manufacturing, and then it's corked around it. You see that? So again, insulation, um, and then this also conforms to the shape of your foot. Okay, now do you see how you could peel this off? You could replace the sole, right? Like as I told you, you know, this has already been done. I think when they replace the sole, I'm not sure, some cobblers probably would pull the midsole off and replace the cork, some wouldn't. It just depends on, you know, what level, uh, you know, uh, of service you're going to get, okay? And then they'd have to put the heel back on, right? The, uh, this particular shoe had a thick rubber heel, whereas the Allen Edmonds um, has a leather heel base. Do you see how it was nailed on? It's nailed up, right? It goes this way. This would be the outside nailed up through. I don't know if you can tell, but there is a rubber layer on the top of it, okay? This is a rubber layer on top of leather. And then the part that touches the ground goes on here. This layer of rubber, which you would never see, basically means you're not gluing the uh, top lift, you're not gluing the top lift to the leather, you're gluing it to this rubber piece. So it can be changed multiple times because when you peel leather off of rubber, you peel off some of the leather. So little things that you never noticed. So pretty interesting, right? And again, let me go back to the uh, Allen Edmonds here. And you can see the, uh, you can see it very clearly here. I just cut the thread in half. I got lucky there. So you can see the outsole stitched to the welt. You can see the welt here. Okay, and then I think over here you could actually, uh, not really, 
maybe it was over here. Yeah, here. Here I hit the thread. Do you see that thread? So this thread goes through there, and that is the stitch that holds the welt to the upper lining, and again, this cloth piece, which I don't know what it's called, okay? So it's not actually stitched to the insole, stitched to the upper, uh, but the uppers, I've tried to pull the, I'm sorry, insole. So the, the stitching is not stitched through the insole. I've tried to pull insoles out of Allen and shoes. I can't do it. You know, the glue that they use in, in here is just so strong. Um, but I'm not saying it can't be done, but I wasn't able to, so. I hope that helps. And by the way, guys, um, a lot of you know that I have kind of a, a slant towards Allen Edmonds. I personally like the brand. If you go to the Allen Edmonds website, and again, this is as of January uh, 2019, um, because there were some changes. Uh, you can see number one here to the logo uh, about September of 2018. And now they're making some other changes. So go to allenedmonds.com. They've made some changes, I guess, to the uh, construction. So you go all the way down to the bottom. And if you can see here, uh, Shoes 101, then it says Our Welts. Now, if you go there, they have uh, what's now, well, first of all, the category is the 360 degree Goodyear welt construction. And all four of these methods of construction that you see here are under the category of 360 Goodyear welt. So they are all 360 degree Goodyear welted, uh, but you'll see here what most of their shoes that we're used to seeing are, are known as now the bench welt, okay? So basically, if you wanna dig into it more, you know, you can see more. If you click on here, it says learn more, then you'll get this tab. Um, so, you know, see the, um, you know, we see the leather insole, the cork, leather outsole, the welt, and then it's stitched together like we're, like, you know, basically like we're used to, okay? Um, so that's one method. They also have some shoes where it's, it's called the feather welt, and it doesn't look tremendously different, except they have the lightweight rubber outsole, um, a rubber midsole. Instead of cork here, they have, it says cork plus foam mid-layer, pour-on, which is like the, uh, you know, like if you buy, buy Dr. Scholl's ear pillow insoles, that's similar to that. You know, they have, so they have a, um, looks like a lighter weight rubber sole uh, with more cushioning. I think they're trying to target an audience that doesn't want the traditional leather shoe that requires break-in. Speed welt here then, if you see this, the speed welt, um, and what I see is a leather a sole with a rubber insert in it and again this foam plus cork so I think this is kind of an intermediate where it's a little more traditional with the leather but it's got the rubber for you know people that uh, you know want that added traction and then again uh, it looks like more cushioning on the inside here so I can't tell you how good or bad they are haven't seen them haven't tried them but just for an FYI and then there's the storm welt the storm welt is um, the storm welt basically is just a version here that's got um, oops sorry about that the storm welt here basically is a version uh, that's got the, well, the, the storm welt, I guess you could say. So that's not really new, but it has a similar construction to some of the other, um, you know, other, other, other feather welt that we saw before. Okay. So go check those out for yourself if you want, right? AllenEdmonds.com. Um, so some changes, didn't want those to, I don't know, catch people by surprise or, you know, try to keep abreast of some of the things that are changing out there. So hopefully that gives you a little better idea of some of the different methods of construction out there. I mean, I guess I basically just focused on the two main ones you'll see. I completely ignored in this video bonded because bonded is just, you know, when the thing's glued on, you know, um, it's, I don't know, my books, it's usually garbage. Um, so, but anyway, two of the best methods of construction. I hope that brought you some value. Uh, and again, take care of yourselves, guys uh, and gals. God bless. And thank you for watching.